Welcome to Xcoder Videos and the fifth in our series of macro uh, hard videos. In today's uh, video, we're going to be taking a short look at uh, binary and hexadecimal notation. And uh, then we're going to complete one of the tasks that uh, are available to us. We'll be making the half adder component that uh, was opened up uh, a couple of videos ago in, in, the, uh, in the video we did, I think, in session number three. Uh, there is some information on binary and hexadecimal in the workspace of, of MicroHard. I am highlighting now the notation systems uh, section of the manual, and you'll notice down here it talks about binary notation and how to convert a number from uh, uh, binary to decimal. Uh, and this information is good. I'm going to give a little bit different information than what uh, than the way they describe it here, though uh, there's, it should be compatible with whatever is uh, said here. And uh, so. First of all, I want, I'll bring over some, uh, uh, a, hmm, yes, yeah, so I'll bring over a, uh, uh, a, a document that I've prepared for uh, this uh, video, and uh, that talks about uh, Counting in decimal, binary, and hexadecimal, giving some comparisons to that, and looking into uh, some informa interesting information about uh, uh, base number systems. Uh, I was first introduced to uh, bases other than uh, base 10, which is also called uh, decimal notation, uh, sometime uh, when I was in uh, public schools growing up, uh, I think it probably was, uh, I was in uh, junior high school at the time, so we're talking about 60 years ago uh, when I first uh, heard about this. We studied, I remember studying, for the most part, we studied base five and learned how to uh, how to uh, count and add and subtract and uh, other things in base 5 rather than base 10. I don't recall them ever mentioning binary, the word binary, or hexadecimal. Uh, so this was a bit before the, uh, a bit of time before the, the, uh, uh, the personal computers became available. What did they call them back then? Um, they didn't even call them personal computers. The first computers that came out were uh, computers that were basically homemade. And uh, so uh, things things were just getting started back then with, with regard to computers. And the only computers that actually existed were all the commercial computers that IBM uh, was making for businesses and so on. There was no such thing as a computer in the home. And uh, so uh, this kind of information was just not generally available to uh, the normal public. But as personal computers became more popular and more people began to learn how to program and things of that nature, then we learned about uh, hexadecimal notation and binary notation, and uh, we've learned more about uh, you know the, the these systems became more and more important. The reason binary is important is because it represents data in the way that computers actually deal with data in bits of of zero and one, and uh, the reason hexadecimal is important is because it's a fairly good way of representing uh, d data uh, that's 
contained within four bits. A four bit, four bits of data can represent the numbers from zero to 15. And hexadecimal, of course, uh, has 16 digits from zero to F. Uh, when we count in the in decimal notation, I have uh, here in the first column, you'll see that uh, we have 10 digits there, and we just count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then uh, that's all the digits that we have, and we have to now start in the, we have to start by adding a 1 to the second column, and then repeating the first column again. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, etc. Uh, binary uh, is very similar to that, but instead of 10 symbols that represent uh, values, there are only two symbols, 0 and 1. And when you run out of symbols, you have to start a new column and uh, in the same way you do with decimal numbers. So uh, one of the difficulties with binary uh, and hexadecimal is that we don't have names for the numbers uh, involving more than two, uh, one digit. Uh, the, uh, so when we go in binary, zero, one, the next number is one, zero. That's not a 10, that's one, zero. It's called, it, you have to spell it out, one, zero, and we don't have a name for it. And that actually is equal to the number two. And then one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and so on until we get down to the, uh, in, in the example here, the last number is one, zero, 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 which is equal to the decimal number 16. Hexadecimal uh, is a little more like decimal. Uh, and instead of 10 digits, hexadecimal has 15 different symbols uh, before you have to start over. And so we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And instead of going to 1, 0 here, we have to add some new symbols uh, for our hexadecimal uh, notation. And uh, by convention, uh, we choose A, B, C, D, E, and F to represent the values that would be equal to, in decimal notation, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Then when we run out of values, we go to the next column over and we start over again, one, zero. Again, that's one, zero. It's not 10, it's one, zero in hexadecimal, and it's equal to the decimal number of 16. You'll notice in, uh, the uh, in our counting, there are several times that we have identical numbers, zero, zero, and zero. In this case, zero, zero, and zero all equal to zero. And then we have one, one, and one, and that equals to zero. Then in each column, we also have another number uh, one, zero, one, zero, and one, zero. And those numbers all, uh, are different values. 10, this equals 10, this equals 2, that equals 16. And we also have uh, uh, one, 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 and if we were to continue counting in hexadecimal right after one zero we'd also have one one and those are all different numbers well how do we um, uh, the question is then becomes how do we 
tell the difference between these numbers and, and what do those numbers represent. So let's take a, a real quick look. I think we've mentioned this uh, enough, the decimal notation. There are 10 symbols to represent digits. In binary notation, two symbols are used to represent digits. In hexadecimal notation, 16 symbols are used to represent digits. Numbers larger than can be represented by a single digit in uh, each of these numbering systems can be represented by combining the digits in order, where each digit represents a magnitude of ever-increasing values. We start over on the right-hand side, and then as we add columns, each column represents uh, values that are uh, exponentially larger in each one of the columns. In decimal notation, uh, the uh, first... Uh, the first column represents the ones column, then the tens column, the third column is the hundreds column, the thousand, then the uh, uh, thousands column, and so on, as we go on to the left-hand side of the digit. I don't know if you can hear that noise uh, in the background, but that's my wife going back there if you can hear it. Uh, and, and something similar takes place within binary notation, hexadecimal notation. In binary notation, instead of tens, we have uh, powers of two. In hexadecimal notation, instead of powers of ten, we have powers of sixteen. Uh, the decimal number 123 then has a value that's equal to 1 times 10 to the second power plus 2 times uh, 10 to the first power plus 3 times 10 to the tens power. Where do, where do those numbers come from? Well, uh, the 1 comes from the third column here. The 2 comes from the second column. The 3 comes from the first column. 10 to the first power, or 10 to the zeroth power, is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. 10 to the first power is 10. So 2 times 10 would be 20. And 10 to the second power is 100. So 1 times 10 to the second power is 100. And you add those all up and, and you get uh, 1, 2, 3. If you take this, uh, uh, if you take this line and calculate the powers, that gives us 1 times 100, 2 times 10, and 3 times 1. And then if we multiply those, uh, do the multiplication for this, we end up with 100 plus 20 plus 3. Uh, of course, that represents, uh, that is equal to 123. Binary and hexadecimal notation do exactly the same thing, except instead of using uh, orders of 10, binary uses orders of 2, and hexadecimal uses orders of 16. From right to left, the digits of a binary number represent the numbers of ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty twos, sixty fours, one hundred twenty eights, etc. And uh, if you just if you look at these and think about the order, the way that they increase. Each one of these is two times the previous one. So we start with ones. Multiply by two gives us two. Multiply by two gives us four. Multiply four by two gives us eight. Multiply eight by two is 16. 16 times two is 32. Then 64 and 128, etc. 
the binary number 10111 has this value, 1 times 2 to the 4th power plus 0. Uh, let me just... Uh, do this right here. Uh, 1 times 2, 1 times 2 to the 4th, plus 0 times 2 to the 3rd, plus 1 times 2 to the 2nd power, 1 times 2 to the 1st power, and 1 times 2 to the 0th power. The 1 comes from the 1st column, the 0 well, that's the last column. The zero comes next to the last, and then we have one, one, and one. That's where those values come from in the, in the equation we've written out here. If we take this number and do all the multiplication, multiplication is easy because uh, it's, it's always by one, and one times any number is equal to that number. So... Uh, we get uh, 1 times 2 to the 4th is 2 to the 4th power. 0 times 2 to the 3rd is 0. 1 times 2 to the 2nd power is 2 to the 2nd power. 1 times 2 to the 1st power is 2 to the 1st power. And 1 times 2 to the 0th power is 2 to the 0th power. Then if we take the powers... For this, 2 to the 4th power is 16. 0, of course, is equal to 0. 2 to the 2nd power is 4. 2 to the 1st power is 2. And 2 to the 0th power is 1. And then doing the addition for that line gives us the number 23. So 10111 binary is equal to the decimal number 23. Well, how do we get from decimal back, uh, how do we get from decimal to, uh, back to a binary conversion? How do we go in that direction? And converting from decimal to binary is relatively easy. Uh, and the process starts by looking for the largest power of two equal to or less than the decimal number. Uh, binary is probably one of the easiest, uh, number systems to convert into because of the fact that all of the uh, multiplication is either going to be by 1 or 0. And so that gives us a very simple uh, method for converting. So the process starts by looking for the largest power of 2 equal to or less than the uh, decimal number. Uh, and then we write down, write a 1 down for that number and subtract that number from the decimals, decimal value. That's the first step. Then the second step and all the remaining steps are going to be repeating this uh, process here. For each power less than the first power, if the new value is smaller than the power, then we write, a, a, if the new value is smaller than the power, we write a zero. Otherwise, if the new value is, let's wait a minute. I think I've, I miswrote that. For each power less than the first power, if the new value is smaller than that power, we write a zero. If the new value is larger than the power, we write a one and subtract uh, the power from the new value, and we repeat this step until all the powers of 2, down to 2 to the first power, uh, are exhausted. And uh, that sounds kind of complicated, but it's, it's really easier to, uh, than it is to describe. Here is an example of converting the decimal number 1,000 into binary. All right, the largest power of 2 that can be subtracted from 1,000 is 512, 512. 
The process says to write a 1 down for that power and subtract the number from the number. That gives us 1 and a new number of 488. 1,000 minus 512 is 488. The next power of 2 down from 512 is 256. 256 is smaller than 408, so we write down a 1 and subtract. That gives us a new number here with two columns, and the new number is 232. 488 minus 256 is 232. Then the next power of 2 is 128. 128 is smaller than 100, 232. So we write down another 1 and do the subtraction. So now we've got 1, 1, 1, and the new decimal number is 104. And then the next power of 2 is 64. 64 is smaller than 104, so that gives us 1, 1, 1, 1, and a new number of 40. Then the next power down from 64 is 32. 32 is smaller than 40. Uh, and it's starting to look like they're all going to be 1s. And, and uh, that's just a coincidence of this particular number uh, that each of these is 1. But uh, we add another 1. We subtract 32 from 40, and that gives us the number 8. The next power down from 32 is 16. 16 is larger than 8, so now we've got to change. Instead of subtracting, we write down a 0, and we write, and we continue down to the next power without subtracting. So we now have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and the new number is still 8. Next power is 8. And 8 is equal to 8, so we write down a 1, subtract 8 from the number, which gives us 0. And once we get down to 0, all the remaining columns that we write are going to be a 0, and that so we don't, we're not going to have any more subtraction to do. The next power is 4. The 4 is larger than 0. We put the 0 down here that gives us uh, that uh, temporary number, 1111010, next power is 2. That's going to be larger than 0, so we add another 0 to the end of that number. And then the last power of 2 is 1, 2 to the 0th power. 2 to anything to the 0th power is going to be 1, and 1 is larger than 0, so we we write down the last column as a zero. And so we have one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, one. And that should be equal to 1,000 uh, in decimal. If we check this out, uh, we look for the columns with one. Uh, two to the third power is eight. And so we put an 8 there. 2 to the 5th uh, power is 32. So we put a 32 down there. And all the others are going to be 1. Uh, there, all the others are going to be 1s. So we've got a 64 power. Uh, 2 to the 6th power, to the 7th power, to the 8th power, and then finally 2 to the ninth power. And if you add all of those up, we come up with a number of 1,000. So the, the check uh, comes out correct. And that's how, uh, that's how you convert from a uh, binary number or convert from a, a, a decimal number to a binary number. Uh, honestly, uh, this seems like a lot of work, and it seems like it's complicated because uh, it's hard to compare binary numbers to decimal numbers to know which is larger. Uh, it's something new, and uh, so it, it's it's 
It's unfamiliar to us. But if we were to treat binary numbers the way we treat decimal numbers, in that if the only number system we ever used was binary, it would be just as easy to use, if not easier, to use than decimal. There are some things about binary that are much simpler to to, uh, to operate than, uh, than decimal numbers. And uh, so it's really not more difficult. It's just different from what, what we have done before. And the same thing is true with hexadecimal uh, numbers. We're just uh, not familiar with them. We don't use them often, and so uh, a little bit different. But, you know, if you had a hexadecimal number, uh, you could probably do the same thing with hexadecimal that you do with decimal numbers. When you compare decimal numbers one to the other, you're not thinking about the exact number and its, and its value. You're thinking about its magnitude. And uh, when you look at 16 and 15, for example, you know that 16 is bigger than 15, and uh, you're not thinking about what 15 actually means. Uh, the human mind is not able to conceive of 15 things. Now, we can, we can say 15, and all that we mean by that is a value that is roughly a certain size. The same thing is true with 16. And the thing we know is that 16 is larger than 15. We may not know exactly what 16 represents. Uh, we could count them out if we wanted to, but that's not the same thing as knowing what it is. Uh, the human mind is able to conceive of only a few things at a time. Uh, and they have done tests where we, we can conceive of zero, uh, no things. That's easy enough to understand. Same thing is true with one. If there's only one thing, it's easy enough for us to picture in our mind. We can picture two things in our mind. We can picture four, uh, three things in our mind. When we get up above three, things become a little more iffy. Four things, sometimes you can do that. Five things, almost uh, probably not. And five is a small number, but it's bigger than what we can, can uh, generally conceive of. Uh, and the larger the number gets, the more difficult it is uh, to conceive of the individual items. And we start thinking of magnitudes of things like that. And if you treat hexadecimal the same way, we know that one zero is a little bit larger than F. We may not know exactly what F represents in the sense we may not know uh, we may not be able to conceive of F things in our mind any more than we can conceive of 15 things in our mind. Uh, they both mean, they both are going to be uh, concepts that we have, but not exact numbers. Uh, we, down here, we can think of these as exact numbers, but when we get above a certain level, we're going to start thinking more conceptually of these things and seeing uh, these as magnitudes of things. And we know that B is bigger than 9. We know that C is bigger than A. Uh, but, uh, uh, and, and we know that it's just a little bit bigger than A. Just two things bigger than A. Uh, so that's what we do with decimal. That's what we do. And, and we can do the same thing with uh, Binary. Now, when we have to start thinking between decimal and binary, and we want to get exact numbers, it's a little bit different. We're going to have to do some calculation to do that, but uh, it can be done. Now, we're going to be looking at uh, some uh, we're going to be looking at some. Uh, uh, at some uh, compo at a component that does some addition, and we want to talk a little bit about the addition, especially of binary addition. This is the kind of addition that takes place within a computer, and uh, I've given some examples here of some uh, simple one-digit uh, addition. And uh, 
when we look at this, we'll, this will give us uh, uh, a picture of what takes place within uh, addition in uh, electrical circuits. When the result of an addition fits within uh, of a single bit addition, one bit binary addition, when the result fits within that one column, then the addition is pretty simple. Uh, zero plus zero, if we start off with the problem, zero plus zero, and we do the calculation, we're going to end up with a result of zero. Uh, it fits within the column, so there's, it's a fairly simple addition. Same thing is true with one plus zero. One plus zero is going to fit within the column. This is the problem. This is the answer. It's going to fit within the column, so we just write the answer down there and we're done. Uh, zero plus one is identical, basically, to one plus zero. The answer fits within a single column, so we just write down the answer. Things get a little more complicated when uh, a when it doesn't fit within the column. Uh, what do you do with uh, with the addition when it doesn't fit in the column? And we're talking about when uh, in binary, when you add one plus one, uh, you're going to have a carry operation which we represent here by taking uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be 0 in the answer column with a carryover into the next column. And if we were to complete this operation, we bring, uh, we basically add 1 to a imaginary 0 here and an imaginary 0 here, and we get the number 1, and that would be the answer. And uh, so, uh, one one. If you're just thinking about a uh, one bit addition, then the logic for doing that is is pretty simple. Now, I in a half adder that we're going to build today, the half adder can do the arithmetic that I've presented here. Uh, it needs two single bit inputs. For example, uh, here's one input, there is the other input. These are the add-ins. It needs two single bit inputs for each add-in and uh, one single bit output for the sum right there. And it needs one single bit output to represent a carry operation right there. And uh, we can say that's the carry bit operation. If you want to think of the carry as a part of the answer, you can think of that as the carry bit. And so the half adder can do all of these uh, problems. Uh, if we look at the logic, for what's going on in here, then it's something like this. The half adder performs a calculation for each of its outputs, and the logic looks like this. For the sum, and uh, I think, uh, let's do, uh, let me, let me uh, zoom in a little bit, uh, zoom out a little bit. So we see a little bit more of the the text. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, and the half adder performs calculation for each of its outputs. The logic looks like this: for the sum, if both add-ins are the same then the sum will be zero. So here is one case where both of the inputs are the same. Zero, if they're both zero, in this case, we got a sum of zero. Here is another case 
where both of the inputs are the same, one and one. And in this case, the sum is zero. So if both of the add-ins are the same, then the sum will be zero. For the carry, if both add-ins are one, then the carry will be one. In this case, both of the add-ins are one. And because both of the add-ins are one, then the carry bit is going to be a one. Otherwise, the carry will be zero. And that uh, is about all we need to know about the half adder, but people want to know why is a half adder a half adder? Why do they call it a half adder? Well, a half adder is called that because it does only part of the work that a full adder would do. Uh, it is sufficient to add two binary digits if a carry does not precede it, otherwise it's insufficient. A complete adder must handle incoming carries. We're not worried about complete adders uh, today, so I'm not going to go any further into that. But if we wanted a complete adder, we'd need one additional input. And that input would be a carry from a previous operation. And if we had, if we had a full adder instead of carry, then we'd be able to Put, uh, stack these adders together for each column of, of an operation, and then the adders would be able to, to uh, uh, take the operation and calculate each of the digits because they would have a carry uh, that could be used within each of the uh, uh, when it, when, within each of the, the, the problems. Now, uh, what would happen with a carry? Uh, for example, let's just assume this was a, a, a this one plus one uh, was not the f the uh, first column of an operation, but it was it was uh, a column somewhere deeper within a, a, a binary digit, and the preceding column had a carry operation that needed to go over it. Basically, you would have, you would get a one, a carry operation right there with the one. And now, instead of two digits that you need to add, you'd have three digits, uh, one, two, and three. And, and a three in binary would... Uh, uh, look differently than uh, a, a three in uh, a three in binary would be a one and a one, and uh, so the sum the sum would be one, and the carry would be one, and that would be the answer. This gives here. This only gives you part of the uh, possible answers from one bit binary addition with the addition of a carry operation coming into the uh, system. You're able to complete that and you get all of the, uh, all of the possible sums for uh, a, a one bit addition. And we'll see that when uh, the program asks us to create a, a full care uh, a full adder component rather than a half adder. So let us uh, go back to microhard and uh, we'll come down here to the half adder and take a look at its specification. And the half adder, takes two bits as inputs and adds them up. And the sum is given as an output with a possible carry bit. Check the, uh, it says check the appendix in the manual for binary notation of numbers and binary arithmetic. We've looked at some information about binary uh, today and which should be sufficient to, to uh, help us to create this uh, component. 
Uh, the truth table, notice the truth table here. You'll see the truth table, uh, the ends. These are the add-ins of the uh, operation. Out is the same as the sum of the operation, and carry is the carry bit if you need one to go out. Uh, notice that uh, for the ends, uh, if both of the uh, if both of the digits are the same, zero and zero, out is going to be zero. One and one out is zero. If they're not the same, that is, one of them is a one and the other is a zero, then out will be a one. Carry uh, is only going to be a one in one case, and that in, is when both of the add-ins are one. Uh, here, here uh, one and one, one plus one is equal to two. Uh, two in decimal, but it's equal to one zero in binary, and that second that column, that second column in the binary being a one, that's a carry bit, and so we had the carry over there. Now I have a design for uh, for a half adder in uh, digital. So let me uh, find my digital application and go look for the uh, half adder. There we go with the half adder. Half adder is a logical component that adds two single bit inputs and returns a single bit answer plus a possible carry bit. And the design of a half adder can be inferred by the logic needed to produce the two outputs. And we've already talked about that uh, today. The half adder has two inputs and two outputs. N1, N2, and we've got a sum and a carry. Uh, if N1 or N2, if one or the other is a one, then we're going to have a one out here. That is the logic of an exclusive OR gate. And so we stick an exclusive OR gate there. On the other hand, a carry is one if both ends are one. That's the logic of an AND gate. So we stick an AND gate right there. And uh, when we run that, we'll see uh, if, if both of the ends are zero, then the sum is zero and the carry is zero. If N1 is 1, then the sum, and N2 is 0, the sum is 1, and the carry is 0. If N2 is 1, and N1 is 0, then the sum is 1, and the carry is one, uh, 0. And then if N1 is 1, and N2 is 2, 1, I'm sorry, uh, then the sum is going to be 0. And carry is going to be one. You can think of the sum of a half adder bit as a odd or even representation. Uh, the uh, in this case it is even, and it's represented by a zero. If it's odd, it's represented by one. And so that is the logic of a half adder. Let's go then over into the design and uh, work our magic. Just going to go in here, clean that up a little bit. And for the parts, we need one exclusive OR. And an AND. And that's all we need there. And to wire these up, we have N, well, excuse me, N1, 2, 
inclusive R uh, N1. and N2 to exclusive or N2. That's the uh, uh, sum logic. And for the carry logic, N1 N2 And that's the uh, logic for the carry. And now, for the output, we have exclusive or dot out to out one or sum. Uh, no, if the uh, name is out based upon the specification, I, I would like to have that to be sum. I would call that a sum. Uh, if I were to specify it, but the specification uh, tells me to call it out, and that's what we do. And and out will be carry. And that that uh, completes the the uh, programming for the half adder. Uh, and I think we have explained that well enough. Let's try the test. Verification passed. We have uh, 12 NANs uh, in this circuit. Uh, where, where do we get 12 NANs? Well, it's because the number of NANs that are used for exclusive OR and the AND uh, in uh, our design uh, uses uh, 12 of those things for for to to make both of these parts and uh, we have four tests because we have two inputs uh, two to the power of two is four and so uh, we have four tests uh, and the in for the carry we have zero 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 and one we have a one only when both of them are one and for the out, we have 0, 1, 1, and 0. It's 0 when both of the bits are the same. It's 1 when the bits are different in the input. Let's press OK. And now we've got a new task unlocked. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we've unlocked the new task called a full adder. And so uh, we'll be doing the full adder uh, a little bit later, but uh, we have some other tasks that uh, uh, we want to complete as well. The uh, the uh, four bit bus uh, multiplexer and the uh, the four way uh, demultiplexer, and uh, we'll probably do those. I think in our next video. And uh, then we'll leave the full adder for uh, a couple of videos uh, down the line. Uh, well, we appreciate your presence today to uh, watch this uh, video. Again, we want to encourage you, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you are a member of Steam, look us up on Steam as Xcoder. My first name is Gil, so you should be able to find me there. And uh, let me know what's up. And uh, we'd like to meet you and be able to chat with you sometime uh, about these uh, games that we play. Uh, again, come back for the next video. Looking forward to seeing you then.